When it comes to developing an MMORPG, networking can be a real hassle, especially if you've never had any previous experience with programming, nor have any experience with making games in the first place. When I first started on my journey of developing my indie MMO, I had a rough experience with coding, and even rougher experience with developing games. The Unity game engine and the c -sharp programming language was all still pretty new to me. Despite this, and despite being told multiple times not to do this, especially as my first game, I decided to make my dream game regardless. Surprisingly, it's been two years since since then, and while most people thought I would have quit by now, I've come pretty far for someone who literally had no idea what they were doing in the first place. In those two years, I've grown wiser and more importantly, I've come much closer to realizing my dream as a reality. Sometimes I think it's unreal, like I'm actually building an MMORPG and so far, despite all of my hardships, it's getting done. My name is Codemaster Jamal and I'm a game developer. I'm working on building my dream game Virtual Monsters, a monster collecting MMORPG based on a fictional world that centers around computer science. This week I worked on one of the core systems that is essential to making an MMORPG, which is my game server. I don't want to reveal too much information about how my server works, but I figured I would share this vlog as a way to inspire other people to make their own games and to not be afraid of taking a risk. Making an MMORPG is tough, it's hard. And it's something that not just anyone can do, but you'll never know what can happen unless you give it a try. So without further ado, let's talk about this week's update to the game. This week, I converted my Dark Rift console application to a Unity application. For those of you who don't know, I'm building my game using a library known as Dark Rift. It's a networking library that will allow you to create cool multiplayer games. When I first started the game, I was still learning a great deal about networking, so I started off with making a console application to test a Dark Rift library. Much to my surprise, I actually managed to make it work, and from there, I was pretty certain that I would succeed in making this in the MMO. The way how Dark Rift works is that you can make these plugins to manage all the networking for your game. This is written purely in C Sharp, however, the only problem with this is that if you're building a game with collision or some kind of physics, or any 3D game for that matter, it's nearly impossible to detect these type things on the server. Fortunately, what I learned from watching various networking tutorials is that you can use the Unity game engine to build a server to manage physics. It gets a lot more complicated from this point on, so I'll I'll keep it as simple as possible. To begin, I had to convert all of my c -sharp code into a code that Unity can understand. Reluctantly, I ended up turning most of my classes into mono behaviors since you can manipulate Unity's game loop to make it easier to send messages between the client and the server. I haven't talked about it in a while and truth be told, I want to address some mistakes I made in a video in the past, but the basics behind networking is that you have two applications. One application, the client, is used to detect input from the user, which is sent over the internet to the second application, the server. The server valid validates this input, then outputs whatever instructions that were triggered back to the client. I also mentioned that I wanted to do a server architecture where there would be one server and then that server would manage multiple mini servers. I managed to do this with three classes. One class to act as the server, which manages players connecting and disconnecting. A second class to manage all of the mini servers, and then a third class to act as the mini server itself. As of right now, players are completely able to log in using their MW Industries account as long as they have valid access to the game. If you guys remember, I recently put up my website that I have been working on for a long time. Registration is currently offline, but it will be up soon so we can go into full detail about the game. I just need to pay for a few legal things that will make sure to protect users when viewing the site. More importantly, if you do choose to sign up for an account, you'll be able to financially assist me as a developer, which will help pay for the development of the game without you guys having to actually spend a single penny. I'd also like to mention that we may have a 3D artist to help on character models and other things for the game. It isn't official yet, but I'm fairly certain this person will be joining us and will help us finish the game and make this game look super awesome. While I did plan on making this game all by myself, hence why it's called an indie MMO, having a helping hand will speed up the process of development greatly, and they've already done a great amount of work already. Finally, I wanted to talk about physics. While I haven't entirely worked on instancing players, I have worked on creating different rooms for players. As you can see, when the server starts up, eight different mini servers are created along with eight scenes. 
Every server will have a multitude of different scenes that it can create and destroy on command. This will help players move around and will help create private scenes for when players battle each other. I haven't finished the battle system just yet, but I will be getting back to that shortly. These scenes are the groundwork for how players will be able to move around, and of course, the player won't be able to see any of this when they are playing the actual game. Instead, you will get a completely different experience as a player playing the game. Something that I learned about making a Unity server application is that your server needs to be completely identical to your client application. This means that all of your textures, materials, and other assets that you use to build your game need to also exist in your server application. I had to move a lot of the prefabs from the client into the server and this of course caused a lot of breaking in the code and caused missing references to certain textures. Let's just say that copying and pasting doesn't always work when making video games. So please don't worry, the server is not a representation of how the game will look once it's done. For now, everything is pretty messy and I need to work out a lot of the kinks before I start testing the game with actual players. The plan is by next year to have an open beta and then to completely release the game by 2022. That's the plan, but we all know how life goes and anything can happen. Well, I guess that'll be all for now. If you enjoyed watching the video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video for the YouTube algorithm. I'll be releasing more tutorials in the future, so please stick around for more. Anyhow, keep making games. Till next time, this is Codemaster Jamal, and I'm signing out.